Closed captioning for News 12 is brought to you by Kenneth Nugent. From the station that's on your side, this is News 12 First at Five. New First at Five, a large tick infestation sweeping across cows in South Carolina. Health officials tonight are worried about the potential threat to the economy and to livestock. South Carolina health experts warning about a rare and aggressive species of tick that can kill animals and get humans severely sick. Thousands of these ticks were recently identified on a farm in the Charlotte area, but scientists believe they could be in other parts of South Carolina as well. Mary Green has the details now from Columbia. State health experts are concerned because they say this species of tick, the Asian longhorn tick, can reproduce very quickly, leading to what they say are unusually high number of ticks in just one group. The concern really is that this tick could overwhelm livestock or dogs or people. And so you could be out walking in the field with your dog and you could get you know, hundreds of ticks that bite on you. They're very aggressive feeders. Smaller numbers of Asian longhorn ticks were found about two years ago on dogs at shelters in Pickens and Lancaster counties. Then last month, a large population of them was identified on cattle in a farm pasture in York County, with DHEC saying their numbers were in the thousands. While these counties are closer to North Carolina, these same ticks have also been discovered recently in Georgia. So health officials say they could be present but not yet identified in more parts of South Carolina. These ticks have gotten humans sick in other countries, but health experts say there's no sign that's happened in the U.S. yet. This is the first time that we've seen an actual established population of this tick in our state. So the risk is there. Uh, what that ends up being, we're not quite sure, but it's a situation, again, we want to closely monitor. And if people are going outdoors, DHEC recommends using EPA-registered insect repellents, wearing protective clothing tucked in at the waist and the ankles to prevent bites, and checking themselves and their families for ticks after they've been outdoors. Reporting Columbia, I'm Mary Green. For pets, the state veterinarian says they haven't seen any signs that these ticks are resistant to standard prevention treatment. But he recommends owners check their pets after walks just to make sure they don't pick up any ticks and then call the vet if they do. Yeah, yeah you don't. I'm <laughs> messing now. Everybody has the heebie jeebies. Every summer <laughs> Sorry we have about a that. Tick story, but this one seems to be kind of serious, right? Yeah, yeah. But let's take a look at the medical district in downtown Augusta. It's kind of overcast and dreary, but you know what? It fits for a Monday. And it doesn't feel too bad out there, right? No. Yeah, that's one benefit, guys. We're kind of getting a break from the storms and also the heat, a very rare opportunity for us here in the month of July. Only hitting high temperatures near 80 degrees right now in Augusta, all thanks to the cloud cover that has been fairly th thick through most of this afternoon. Now, even though it looks like it's going to rain, not really tracking much in the way of rain chances through this evening or tonight. Most spots did stay below the mid-80s, 81 right now in Aiken, 79 in Thompson. Waynesboro, you're at 87, the warmest spot likely just saw a little bit of sunshine there. But for the rest of us, a very comfortable July afternoon. Most of the rain so far today has stayed well to our south, situated along this stalled front that's impacting South Georgia, North Florida. That's where the rain chances do look to stay for most of this evening and to tonight. Temperature-wise for us, we're only near 80, going to stay near that temperature mark at least the next several hours. Late tonight into early tomorrow morning, we'll eventually see our low temps down near 70 degrees. And for your Tuesday, once we get down to 70, could see some patchy fog early tomorrow morning. Not going to last too long. We'll generally just be cloudy most of our Tuesday. Into tomorrow afternoon, not overly hot, but an isolated storm is possible. We'll have much more on this forecast in just about 10 minutes. The Burke County Sheriff's Office asking for your help with information in their investigation involving this man. Morris Harden Jr. died from a gunshot wound yesterday around 11 in the morning in Waynesboro. Deputies found the body near Watkins Farm Road. They don't know anything about the suspect beyond that. They say Harden does not have any connections to Burke County. If you know anything about this man, you can call the Burke County Sheriff's Office to give them that information. Two people are in the hospital after a train accident just up the road in Columbia. It happened after a Norfolk Southern train ran into another train that had derailed. As you can see here, one car had flipped over on its side, but we're told three locomotives and three cars total derailed in this accident. The crash also caused a small fuel spill. General C is to Alton. Um, 
So you have to kind of take them, take them serious and, and just make sure that everything is okay. I think the most important thing is, is for the public to know there's no danger to the public at all um, from, from this, from this um, train wreck. Did cause some traffic problems. The railway was shut down while crews worked to clear the scene. It is still shut down in that area. No word on the severity of the injuries of the workers. Two new Omicron strains of COVID-19 sweeping the nation now. Highly contagious, both of them, and more people say they're testing positive again. A new study shows almost 40,000 people got COVID twice with more health risks. While the symptoms might be mild in the beginning, doctors say the best way to avoid going to the hospital is to get the vaccine, and if you already have that, make sure you're boosted. FDA manufacturers are already designing a new booster for the fall. Two people in the hospital with severe burns after this crash on Friday. It happened around 3.30 in the afternoon near Leroy Highway. Georgia State Troopers say a dump truck merged into the highway before another car could react. It hit the truck and immediately caught fire. Two witnesses pulling over to the side of the road rushed in there to pull them out of the front seats. Honestly, I didn't even think about it. Uh, I've got eight combat tours. Uh, Lots of lots of rockets, mortars, bullets, explosions. Uh, I didn't even think about it. I just ran out there. It's just the way it is, man. You gotta do what you gotta do. The right person in the right place there. Fire officials closed the roadway down for several hours for the scene to be cleaned up. We know the driver of the truck did refuse medical treatment on Friday at the scene. Former Vice President Mike Pence is stopping by Florence to deliver a speech. He is planning to speak at Florence Baptist Church next Wednesday at 7 o'clock. He's going to talk about a post-Roe v. Wade world. Doors will open an hour early for seating. That is one of the churches in Highland Park, Illinois, tolling around the same time of that parade shooting last Monday. They rang the bell seven times, remembering the people who died that day. Many other people gathered around the memorial today as well to comfort one another and pay respects. The 21-year-old suspect in custody now facing seven charges of first-degree murder. The Lake County State's Attorney says he plans to seek life in prison for that gunman. The Highland Park community changing after a gunman opened fire last week, but some businesses are beginning to reopen their doors now. Officials allowing store owners back to their space over the weekend, and they could start serving the neighborhood Sunday morning. Some neighbors sat on benches yesterday near where the parade stopped, and one pizza place says they're just happy to go back to some routine again if they can help their customers feel normal as well. Amber Heard's lawyers are looking for a mistrial from Johnny Jepp's lawsuit against her. According to the five-page document, her legal team says one juror member was the wrong one. They shared the same last name and address as the person who was summoned, but they are not the same age. Heard's team wants a new trial with every juror member originally summoned, but declined further comment. Johnny Depp's team declined to comment as well. Georgia's Attorney General Chris Carr coming to Columbia County tomorrow for an important meeting. He'll be talking about new and ongoing efforts to handle gang activity in Georgia. Because of the subject matter, they say the first half of the meeting is closed off until about 11.15 in the morning. Then the public is welcome in after that. It's going to be at the Columbia County Board of Education in Evans. They changed the location today because of an increase of law enforcement planning to uh, attend that meeting as well. All right, there are going to be several lane closures to tell you about this week. Construction crews working to widen some of the lanes near I-20. Work zones are over for the day, but they'll start tomorrow from 9 a.m. and last until 4 p.m. near the I-20 eastbound exit to Lewiston and Augusta. Then the right lane heading westbound near Lewiston Road will be closed for several months for fixing that roadway. Drivers should expect delays on that daily commute and reduce those speeds when you're in those work zones because those uh, people are working hard there, close to traffic. If you, if you can, Columbia County says to plan an alternate route until Friday. South Carolina drivers are finally seeing some relief at the gas pump like those of us in Georgia have been seeing. AAA says the average price of regular gas here and in South Carolina is the same at about $4.20. That's about $0.12 cents decrease when filling your tank. The cheapest gas in the Palmetto State, that is in Somerville at nearly $4 a gallon. The national average is still high. It's about $4.70.
These girls steady, aim, and release their hours to be the best of the best in their elementary school. How they give it their all after the break. Oh, we'll expect some slightly higher storm chances Tuesday, but looks like the majority of the rainfall this week holds out until the middle of the week. An update on the first alert forecast just after the break. Find the vehicle you've been looking for today at a price that won't break the bank at Gerald Jones Honda. Join the Augusta Metro Chamber on Thursday, July 21st with Dr. Jeffrey. Well, it's just a cloudy Monday out there as we give you a live look out there at I-20 River Watch Parkway. A lot of heavy cloud cover, but you know what? That's keeping the temperatures down today. Absolutely is, Richard. A very comfortable afternoon for us. I think a lot of people are happy with the weather out there today. No storms, no heat. We're sitting at 80 degrees. The only thing is it's still a little bit humid. Dew points close to 70, making that heat index feel just a couple degrees warmer than actual temps. But a nice view over Beach Island. You can see some pretty thick cloud cover that's been holding very steady through most of the day. Tomorrow we're expecting a good bit of clouds to stick around again, which likely will keep us below 90 heading into our Tuesday. Through this evening, we'll stay in the 80s the next several hours, dropping into the low 70s by tomorrow morning. Can't rule out maybe some patchy fog that does form early Tuesday, so a heads up for that for your early commute. Temperature-wise, thanks to the clouds through most of the day tomorrow, should keep our high temperatures generally into the mid to upper 80s for our Tuesday. Cannot rule out an isolated shower storm later into the afternoon tomorrow, but not looking to be too widespread. A lot of us do look dry again heading into tomorrow, but most of us should be able to see the upper 80s, maybe a few spots that do see a little bit more sunshine do briefly hit the 90s tomorrow afternoon. Now, yesterday, Bush Field actually did set a new daily rainfall record, 2.79 inches officially at Bush Field yesterday, broke the old record that was set all the way back in 1894. And with that heavy rain all last week, we are close to half a foot above normal for the month of July. So we have seen plenty of rain so far this month and for the year as well. Current look at visible satellite, most of those storms are erupting in South Georgia, North Florida, closer to the two or that stalled boundary. For us here locally, just cloudy skies, not much rain on radar, so we should stay dry for the rest of this evening and tonight. But where that stalled boundary is found close to the Gulf Coast, it could actually produce maybe our next named tropical system, the National Hurricane Center, going with a 30% risk of this developing into a named system over the next five days. Even if it doesn't develop, it will be highly dependent if the center does stay kind of offshore, move a little bit more inland. Nonetheless, determining, or even if it doesn't necessarily become named, it's still going to produce torrential rainfall across the Gulf Coast. Louisiana, Mississippi, Alabama, even the Panhandle of Florida, likely going to see over six inches of rainfall over the next five days. For us here locally, we do stay dry this evening and two tonight. Temperatures bottoming out to the 70s by tomorrow morning. Heading into our Tuesday, high temps a little bit warmer than today, getting close to 90. Isolated shower possible, but just not looking too widespread on Tuesday. Better chance for rain is going to be on Wednesday, especially into the afternoon and evening hours. Some of those storms could turn severe. There is an isolated severe weather threat Wednesday, but hopefully we dodge that threat for the main part. 80s again by Thursday and Friday. It looks like that pattern will hold steady into the weekend. All right, you know, some kids like to spend their time reading, playing outside maybe, but these students from Pelion Elementary in Georgia, they like to set their eyes on a different activity. Greg Adeline shows us how these girls practice every day trying to hit the bullseye. What does greatness look like? Is it a trophy or a title? Or are those simply the inevitable results of finding a target and aiming to hit it again and again? The amount of dedication that it took for them to reach a national level was unbelievable, and their hard work and practice paid off greatly. In Pelion, the archery team at Pelion Elementary School let us in on a practice session, and it quickly became apparent how these fourth and fifth grade girls hit their targets with ease and precision. I'm always thinking to myself, okay, I'm gonna shoot a 50 today. The standards are high and self-imposed to see the amount of pressure that they have on themselves and how they can overcome that pressure is something that's really amazing and they put in the work and even after dark she's like hey mom cut on the big outside light and she'll you know practice more um it's been pretty amazing to watch her come out of her shell with each shot proving not only do they belong they're better for a girl in this sport, um, you know, a lot of times they are out shooting the boys on our team. Normally boys would say that girls are worse than boys at like everything, but 
I'm pretty sure we just proved it wrong. So it was not altogether a surprise when these sharpshooters took home the national championship in Louisville last month. It's really cool to see the girls excel and to put in the hard work and to achieve their dreams. Lessons learned as young girls that will last a lifetime. That greatness is achieved every time you pick up that bow, pull back that string, and when it's time to shine, you take your best shot. They are good. A national championship? I'm guessing that's the first ever for that elementary school. And they are completely humble about it. Kind of like, yeah, we yeah, we're, we're better than the boys. <laughs> we, we proved them wrong. I mean, how yeah. great is that? And future Olympians probably, too. No kidding. And mom saying she has to turn on that bright light <laughs> so she can practice well, even when something. it's dark. Yeah. Awesome stuff. Keep, keep it up, girls. Coming up, health experts are warning people about side effects caused by extreme heat interacting with your medication this is a big deal so what do you need to look out for and how do you protect yourself we'll talk about that next the live listen to stacy abrams on defunding the police so yes stacy abrams is wrong and dangerous davis appliance and furniture is your one-stop shop for all things for your home if you're looking for an upgrade in the kitchen laundry room, living room or bedroom we have you covered with brands like ashley scott living whirlpool ge frigidaire and many more check us out you won't be disappointed Today, the mayor of Savannah joining the president and other American leaders at the White House. The event celebrating the bipartisan gun safety legislation recently signed into law. As much as it was a celebration, it's also a memorial for those killed in Uvalde, Buffalo, Highland Park, and those mass shootings. Mayor Van Johnson hoping that the Safe Communities Act will help people feel safer visiting Savannah. And my greatest nightmare is that someone who does not, should not have a gun, victimizes uh, our community, both our residents and our tourists. Well, during the event, a pedestrian, a pediatrician, I should say, from Uvalde, Texas, spoke about the elementary school shooting in his hometown. Another speaker lost his mom in the shooting in Buffalo, New York. Millions of Americans are experiencing heat waves, and certain medications can make the heat even more dangerous. Health experts warn there could be side effects when some medicines interact with the extreme heat. Mandy Gaither explains with ways you can protect yourself. A heat wave continues to crash over much of the U.S. and mixing those soaring temperatures with some medications could cause major problems. Sometimes the reaction may take uh, weeks to months uh, for it to fade. Dr. Reza Conroy with the Ohio State University Western Medical Center says some medications that don't go well with the sun include some antibiotics antidepressants, antihistamines, anti-inflammatories, and medications for blood pressure and diabetes. For diabetics, Conroy says bring a cooler when you're out as heat can degrade insulin and other medicines. Put the medication, especially insulin, in the cooler and keep it nice, cool, and dark. Conroy says sun-related side effects of medications usually develop about 24 to 72 hours after sun exposure and may appear to be an exaggerated sunburn. When possible, Conroy says to take the medicine before bed instead of in the morning and follow the sun smart steps, slip on clothing that covers the body, swap on SPF 15 to 30 or higher broad-spectrum water-resistant sunscreen, slap on a hat, Seek shade and avoid the sun between 10 a.m. to 2 p.m. and slide on sunglasses with UV protection and side panels. For Health Minute, I'm Mandy Gaither. Conroy recommends talking to your doctor if the sun causes a reaction. And they can have you stop taking the medicine, they can lower the dose, or change to a different kind of medicine. So there are some solutions around it. Well, check this out. A veteran-owned fishing charter in Savannah spreading its reach across the military community. A new Army Ranger just joining American fishing charts, bridging the gap between military and civilian life. Both men serving several tours overseas. And despite dealing with physical and mental challenges here at home, they're determined not to let anything get in their way. He's not disabled, he's just accessible. You know what I'm saying? I've seen him work harder than anybody else and then sit there and try to tell me, I'll work on doing more. And I'm like, bro, like, how much do you want to do? American Fishing Charters helps veterans with their nonprofit, Not Lucky Fishing, that's K-N-O-T, <laughs> Not Lucky Fishing, providing an outlet to treat PTSD.
Pretty cool story there out of Savannah. Hey, heading into the weekend, if you have any outdoor plans, we are anticipating the threat of storms each afternoon, Saturday and Sunday. But luckily, no 90s should stay in the 80s for us. Now look at that seven day for you just after the break. Five ninety nine. Go bold when the captain is called Captain D's. Our work made by a South Carolina student could be front and center on Google's homepage soon. How cool is this? Carolyn Zing from Tiga K is one of 54 winners of the Do Doodle Google contest. If you can say that five times fast. Five times. This year's theme is I Care About Myself by, and you fill in the blank. Winning artwork will be featured on the uh, homepage for a day, and the artists get a $30,000 scholarship for their trouble. Yeah, um, but look at how good this artwork is. You still have time to vote for the winners. We have the link posted to our website. Just search Google Doodle, and again, you can help a South Carolina student get some serious cash for college. Hey, that's a pretty good initiative there. Definitely cool and definitely vote for as well. Hey, any late plans the next couple of afternoons? Tuesday does look mostly dry. We'll hang into the 80s again tomorrow, most likely hitting the 90s up at the lake by Wednesday. And Wednesday appears to be the better time frame for us to see some scattered storm activity. Those winds will start to pick up a little bit as well out of the west between 10 to 15 Wednesday afternoon. As we head later into the week, we'll see the 90s briefly Wednesday afternoon, but back into the 80s Thursday, Friday into this weekend. We'll even get some mornings back down into the 60s. So luckily for this week, the trend is going to be a little bit below normal as far as temperatures go, but it is going to stay pretty wet. High rain chances most afternoons once we get past tomorrow. Stick with us. We'll have much more news and weather just after a short break. Investigate TV is 